Welcome to the last session of the workshop, the second okay. session of the day, titled Fostering Place and Space for Articulation of Marginalized Belongings, Innovative Approaches in the Field of Heritage and Museums. And although the title of the session sounds uh, very complex and long, what it is actually going to do this session with the presentations and contributions that are in line in front of us is it's going to explore and probe even deeper into some of the questions that we already opened yesterday and today on what is belonging, what is heritage, who does the heritage belong to, why does it belong to those people, is it accessible, who renews the heritage, who makes the heritage of the future and heritage of today. And moving away from some more traditionalist and conventional approaches of understanding what heritage can be and what role it has in the society. In the following session now, we're going to be talking about different angles and approaches from activist, artistic and institutional perspectives on how to tackle and how to intervene into heritage with various forms of interventions that can then overspill into different forms of values of heritage through belonging that tap into political values, cultural values, social values, and most importantly, they sort of challenge the social transformations through these interventions. So today with us, <coughs> we have Flaka, I'm gonna try this, Terta, back here from Prizren, and she will go first, giving us insight into cultural activism and other alternative ways of protecting and promoting cultural heritage on the example of Prizren. After Flaka, we're going to have Ivo from Tank Punker in Tirana, um, exploring the uh, new alliances of public space in the creation of commons. Um, after that, we have local game changers and local forces of Ivana Vaseva and Filip Jovanovsky from Faculty of Things That Cannot Be Learned, and they will present their artistic work in exploring and probing into really traumatizing issues of causalities and interrelations between democracy and the public space. And then finally, we have an institutional perspective from Irena uh, Ruzin from the Institute and Museum Bitola, also representing Bal Balkan Museum Network. And she will finish by taking us back to basics, or ba taking us back to fundamental questions on institutional powers and institutional capacities in relation to participation, inclusion, and accessibility. But to start off with, Flaka, take the mic, take the floor. Thank you very much Thanks. for uh, having us here and for uh, this wonderful workshop, also for this wonderful place. As I'm architect myself, I was just staring at it and uh, <laughs> just adoring um, every, every part of it. Uh, I'm Flaka uh, Zerza Bekire, as um, uh, already Anna introduced me. I will uh, represent um, community-based organization Esmandrusha, which is based in uh, Prizren and Pristina, uh, but actually is spread with this work in uh, most of the municipalities of uh, Kosovo. I'm also part of the University of Pristina, Faculty of Architecture, as teaching assistant, and have uh, finished my PhD studies at the University of Ljubljana in uh, modern culture heritage. So it's my pleasure uh, to be here among uh, you today. Um, as the as the beginning of my presentation, I will just uh, uh, give you words about the uh, organization as Manjusha, uh, which goes uh, for uh, if I translate it literally. Um, walk differently, but actually um, it means um, uh, civil em emancipation in different way. Uh, and um, as uh, was uh, born as organization in prison in 2006, uh, uh, and six, as um, uh, immediate need to, rega uh, to react against the threat that cultural heritage was having uh, there because of the uh, lack of the institutional care and because of the fact that cultural heritage actually was uh, never uh, at that time and still uh, continues to be in some way uh, uh, as a priority of uh, local and uh, central uh, institution and also the political agendas uh, of our country, especially in last two decades after the 99th conflict and 
um, these uh, years where everybody was going to uh, come to the money as fast as uh, they could and uh, all the political parties uh, were having their separate agendas and because of the elections that were repeated time after time, uh, we had a very bad situation in, um, especially in cities that were dealing with their historical uh, core, such was prison. So actually as organization we were born there, but um, ever since uh, we are uh, dealing with uh, dem democratic governance <coughs> and we are connected with the uh, citizens' needs, which uh, time after time implementing our different projects, spread their uh, areas of work, so uh, we are not uh, anymore um, uh, connect, uh, uh, focused only in uh, cultural heritage, but uh, during these uh, uh, years of our work, we also spread our interest in um, environment, in uh, uh, public areas mostly, and in, uh, in uh, uh, urban um, uh, planning as a participatory uh, 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 process, which uh, our uh, institutions are really not uh, taking care of. Uh, so uh, we implement uh, participatory planning and uh, development methodology, and we really think that uh, the, uh, the state development should, uh, should be uh, built from uh, the uh, bottom up. And uh, we are working with uh, different community groups, uh, mostly marginalized uh, community groups, with uh, women, with um, youth especially, with uh, people with uh, disabilities, uh, uh, elder people, which are um, really not in the center of focus of the uh, institutions. And um, of course, during these, all these years of our work, we have different partners, um, varying for, from a local and central level, also with, uh, um, for example, uh, public and non-public institutions. We work closely also with schools, with universities, uh, because we try to, to interact as much as we can with youth and to um, make them think for the cultural heritage in their very beginning steps of uh, uh, building their personalities. Uh, our vision is sustainable municipalities governed by all. Uh, we think that, uh, as I said, uh, the citizens should be really in the core of everything. And uh, of course, to achieve this, we have uh, three of our main strate strategic objectives. I will uh, mention uh, the first one since I really uh, like and I'm into the first one uh, because we think that uh, by organizing local communities and by increasing public pressure, uh, we can actually promote advanced practices of a democratic and inclusive governance in Kosovo municipalities. And uh, the, uh, the projects or activities that I'm, I'm going to show you today are closely connected uh, with uh, the, our first uh, strategic obje objective. As I said, uh, in our activities, uh, we uh, take care what citizens need and ask for. Uh, so our projects uh, don't just um, are born in our offices, but uh, they, they uh, take the beginning in, uh, in community um, and in the neighborhood meetings. We organize uh, different small neighborhood meetings and other um, uh, uh, bigger uh, focus groups uh, where uh, we discuss with them in daily basis and uh, during this time our office in some way uh, not that we planned like that but uh, turned to be a meeting point, point with the citizens where they could not find answers in municipality of prison or Pristina and they were just knocking our doors and uh, seeing the potential how we cooperate and how we could help them in order to uh, address their concerns and also to translate them in, uh, in a different uh, approach projects and um, activities that I'm go going to uh, show you today. Um, as organization, we are also part of uh, different networks of cultural heritage, such as Southeast European Heritage Network, the uh, Cultural Heritage Forum of Prison uh, in uh, Kosovo level as well, etc. Uh, the topic of this um, uh, workshop actually triggered us uh, to show some of our projects that are related to cultural activism uh, because we think that um, uh, cultural activism is much needed in the municipalities of Kosovo where people are somehow uh, oriented in the way that uh, they should just go to work, uh, go to a school and wait what uh, municipalities will do with, for them and that's all. Uh, so uh, we thought that uh, as organization actually we could work more on 
on um, developing the cultural activism as a form of uh, promotion and protection of uh, cultural heritage. Um, the, the, the examples that I'm going to show are just a few of our work, uh, of course, and I would uh, invite all, all of you who uh, are interested, you can check our uh, uh, other related work in our uh, web page and uh, uh, social media because it was impossible to include everything here and to take uh, other uh, speakers' uh, time. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, Esmandrusha was born in Prizren, uh, which is actually a cultural city known for its historical center and also for DocuFest and other uh, um, uh, festivals that are taking place. But of course, after, after every um, beautiful picture, there stands a, a sad story or um, another story. Uh, actually, uh, Prizren uh, was, um, uh, as I said, not uh, prioritized uh, in, uh, in uh, local agendas and uh, cultural heritage was not seen as a potential for the cultural promotion and touristic promotion and even economical uh, promotion of the country. Uh, in, uh, um, in opposite, uh, the cultural heritage was more seen as a burden or uh, in a way uh, it was uh, seen as um, an old thing that should uh, get rid of it and should take place for another new structures. Um, uh, having this in mind, uh, many old houses that are uh, that were part of the cultural city center of uh, prison uh, were uh, were time after time uh, destroyed, leaving place for new uh, areas, new uh, places where um, uh, private investors uh, were building something new or leaving place for parking lots, as I will show. So, uh, in uh, in all uh, these two de decades, uh, as I was showing, we had we were um, uh, facing different. Uh, agendas uh, uh, from private sector or also public uh, sector, of course, not, uh, not in the uh, uh, same front, but uh, hidden after uh, different agendas where cultural heritage was destroyed in purpose. Uh, uh, was, uh, there was a fire in purpose, for example, as uh, in this um, uh, area near the Catholic Church in prison. Uh, so actually, we were facing with uh, different um, um, actions that were uh, taking rid uh, of uh, cultural assets in cultural center of prison but also uh, because of the uh, 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 lack of interventions of uh, um, uh, cultural institutions, uh, we have the case like these uh, buildings, for example, that were not uh, 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 restored in time. And uh, actually, some of them, as this house, for example, in this Mar Marin Barleti Street, uh, took the life of one uh, small girl, uh, Geneta, a six-year-old uh, old girl from the Raya community. Uh, they were living in this house because of their bad conditions conditions and uh, even though these houses present a cultural heritage because they uh, are from the 19th century and uh, very interesting uh, study cases to look after them in the future, uh, the house was demolished and then uh, this girl um, uh, uh, was not uh, living, unfortunately, we lost her. Uh, this was the moment when uh, we as organization thought that uh, public po protest uh, where was the, uh, the good answer for, uh, for in order to raise the public pressure uh, in local authorities and we were organizing these protests in order to wait that any institutional leaders will take the responsibility but actually nothing happened. Uh, again, we think that uh, we achieved in uh, putting in uh, media this, uh, this topic and uh, having the attention of the institutions that buildings should not live in this state that uh, will uh, uh, come as an endanger for, for, the, for the citizens. Uh, but this is not the unluckiest um, uh, case that we have. We have also the case of the Lombardi cinema in, uh, in prison, uh, where the uh, local authorities as, and also the privatization agency of Kosovo um, uh, decided once um, uh, in, a, in a moment that this old building and actually the only cinema of prison should be uh, ruined in order to leave place for a parking lot because of its, its strategic uh, position in the city. Uh, city of prison. Um, again, as an organization, uh, we uh, spent uh, nights and days uh, in order to organize a public petition and also to gather 53 other organizations that were uh, working in Kosovo in order to address this issue and convince them that actually uh, this building is part of a, a collective memory of prison and Kosovo presents a rare case of a building itself, etc. And um, after a really uh, serious and hard work 
we managed actually uh, to change the uh, political agenda of the city and also the uh, private privatization company and managed to put this building in the list of uh, uh, protected buildings of, uh, of a Ministry of Culture in Kosovo and uh, also uh, this place uh, become, uh, became a place of uh, uh, culture production activities since there is running a, an uh, organization, Dumbardi organization now and actually this is um, uh, I would say a success story of all the cultural community of, uh, of Kosovo. Uh, but uh, um, as we all know, we are not dealing always with uh, successful stories. We have, for example, case where in historical center of uh, Prizren, uh, from 34 parking uh, uh, lots, uh, private parking lots, uh, 25 of them were built in old uh, city houses that were destroyed. So pri uh, private uh, investors uh, saw that Prizren uh, needs a big parking lot. The tourists can uh, don't have a place to uh, park, uh, so they just uh, started to destroy old houses and to uh, create uh, small parking lots and to gain money uh, for one euro for one hour uh, in order to provide uh, parking lots. So at this moment we lost most of the uh, culture assets in uh, historical center of Prizren. Uh, we uh, saw as an organization that our <coughs> press releases, our interviews, our uh, meetings with the municipality are not um, doing as much as we thought that is necessary. So we started to see that culture activity is an answer and to start public performances uh, as a form of addressing this concern of citizens. So actually this is a public performance in uh, Shadavan uh, Square, which is main square of uh, prison, all uh, square. And uh, we uh, put our private cars for a moment there and uh, announced that uh, the old city square is actually a big, big parking lot where everyone could park for free and that's uh, in this way we, we thought that uh, we can uh, take the attention of local authorities, which uh, in a way uh, we did. Uh, other um, activities uh, are, for example, to mention this um, Once an, Upon a Time exhibition where we, uh, c uh, we uh, made a comprehension between uh, all city structure and uh, the, city, the uh, our day's uh, city structure, which differs in a very uh, big way. It's basically uh, nothing left uh, in uh, these 20 years. Uh, a lot, really a lot, was destroyed and replaced with new structures that were not taking uh, care of uh, any uh, conservation policies uh, and uh, um, uh, we th thought that uh, uh, by inviting local authorities in this exhibition we could face them with this reality and uh, embarrass them in a way for the fact that they are not taking care of the city. Uh, other public intervention that we made is actually uh, the one that was trying to uh, bring the old um, all the pavement of the main street of uh, prison which was replaced with new materials as a, uh, uh, agen uh, as a municipality agenda of the time. Uh, citizens were concerned that uh, this old pavement was um, uh, uh, put out without uh, their uh, consultation, without asking them. Uh, so we thought that uh, public performance like that where we could we were uh, putting stickers and bringing back uh, in a symbolic way uh, this pattern could uh, call the attention of authorities these pictures were made uh, maybe at five in the morning because we had to go there really in the morning where there were no cars no police etc Yes, this was uh, a moment where we were putting them. Uh, other uh, public interventions, um, uh, performances, which I would stop today, is the fact uh, are connected with the fact that some restorations of the cultural assets in uh, Kosovo uh, last forever, and they keep uh, close uh, these cultural assets for some time, um, making uh, no possibility for tourists to enter or no possibility to uh, uh, to uh, produce any cultural activity. For example, the Turkish bath of Ghazi Mehmet Pasha in prison uh, is a um, cultural asset which, which is also used as a gallery because we don't have a gallery in prison and we are using this historical center. But because of the everlasting uh, restoration process, this gallery was uh, closed for, uh, for uh, really a good, uh, big time. So uh, we tried to uh, install this public intervention. Uh, I don't know if you can notice, we installed uh, spiders which were all handmade and uh, took a lot of time to uh, 
to put there, uh, just uh, just as a public call that uh, you cannot uh, take uh, the uh, interventions forever and keep the uh, doors of uh, cultural institutions forever closed. Um, uh, it was a funny, uh, funny. Um, public performance, which was also really a lot in the media, and we think that uh, we also uh, tried to, um, as again I'm saying, embarrass in a way um, the institutions. But uh, not only this, we are also trying uh, to call attention of the uh, citizens for the importance of uh, cultural assets as are the uh, old city houses, the rare old city houses that are left in prison, such as uh, is uh, the Kiraitani family house from the 19th century. Uh, we made an event when we call all uh, uh, citizens to come for a coffee and um, traditional uh, cold tea in this uh, old house. and. Uh, out of the sudden one Saturday, this house became uh, really popular with people who were just uh, uh, coming by and uh, uh, being surprised uh, of this uh, asset in prison because this, this house is not no noticed from the uh, uh, street and many people uh, didn't even know that this house exists. But what we wanted to know, uh, to uh, achieve actually is um, to promote uh, the uh, individual uh, interest of, old, uh, of some families that have for this uh, uh, old houses, for example, um, this couple uh, has inherited this uh, house and they are taking care uh, of this house uh, with their own salaries and with their own afford. So, so the municipality or the cultural institutions did basically nothing for uh, this house. All they did is uh, all the <coughs> time uh, maintaining it with their own forces. And we wanted to give an example that actually these old houses could not be seen as only as a burden, but also as a possibility for economical development and also to open them for tourists because uh, prison uh, in, uh, during summer becomes really popular with tourists because of different uh, culture festivals. But most of them are concentrated in public cultural buildings and not in private ones such as such are, for example, these houses. Uh, we are also promoting other ways um, of um, uh, keeping the cultural heritage alive, such as um, the trainings and workshops, with, especially with youth and women and other marginalized groups. Uh, for example, I wanted to share today the uh, project which is connected with the filigree craft, uh, spread also in other places of the Balkans, but uh, are also inherited in our country. Uh, it was um, uh, a long training with the youth and woman because it also had uh, as um, uh, objective to uh, to uh, make them possible to uh, in, uh, promote in the future this uh, craft but also to uh, open their own small businesses where they can uh, yeah, promote uh, their work. Um, the training that took uh, part was also um, uh, uh, actually, we, we did also other uh, um, publications in this project and other uh, projects because we are uh, not doing only public interventions, but we are also working in different disciplines like producing uh, uh, different um, uh, uh, research work uh, in different way and also uh, organizing, for example, fairs and other uh, activities that could actually uh, promote the cultural heritage of uh, Kosovo. This was uh, a fair where also um, uh, regional artists were uh, taking place. And of course, uh, we had then uh, the major who came and uh, was also uh, in the center of media and uh, kept this project alive because they they saw the interest, basically. Many women and girls wanted to come to these uh, uh, workshops and gain um, a knowledge about uh, old crafts. Um, uh, another way on um, charming, let's say, the cultural heritage um, is this project where uh, we uh, actually translate one uh, traditional um, uh, a play uh, known uh, as uh, Don't Don't Be Mad, or I don't know how to translate. Uh, I think all Balkan people know uh, this game. Uh, the cultural heritage in Albania is uh, uh, doing this uh, uh, practice for the cultural cities, where actually you can uh, play with uh, different information of uh, cultural assets and also culture um, uh, in, in general uh, uh, for the uh, Kosovo in this case. Uh, so uh, this was an event actually 
Actually, here is the Minister of Culture, which by coincidence was our executive director back in time. But still, even though he's uh, now Ministry of Culture, we are criticizing the ministry all the time and, of course, seeing possibilities to, to <laughs> network, but where they need a um, uh, 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 voice, uh, we are there always because uh, we are dealing uh, again and again with the same stories uh, with the cultural heritage. So yes, this is the, the game uh, as a, a new tool for entertainment and education on cultural heritage. Uh, and what's important, we have happy faces of children uh, in the end. Uh, I will close my presentation with the uh, latest initiative that we took uh, with our organization. It's the initiative for assessment, protection, and promotion of modern uh, heritage in Kosovo. Uh, coming myself from this uh, discipline, um, I think that it's really in, uh, important to uh, bring our attention to our latest heritage, such as, uh, such as the heritage that uh, um, Took, uh, took, time, uh, took time and was built during the socialist e era, actually, uh, during the time that we were part of the ex-Yugoslavia. Uh, uh, we think that this initiative is um, needed because uh, many of these buildings are uh, being also destroyed, are being enveloped with new facades and etc. Uh, so uh, we thought that uh, we should organize the community in order to protect and promote uh, the uh, cultural heritage of this time and also to not network with other uh, cities, uh, other countries of the region in order to, uh, to promote more values of, of this uh, period. Uh, what we were doing actually is mapping these most important buildings because again, when tourists are coming in our cities, they go in a uh, uh, cultural assets of uh, Byzantine time or of, uh, uh, Ottoman time and they just pass through these latest buildings which, which are actually monuments itself. Uh, so uh, the fact that we started this mapping and uh, doing uh, um, uh, a, a walk in the city of Pristina is actually to uh, give the attention uh, that they deserve about the information, where they build, what they present, etc. Uh, we are also conducting different workshops with uh, students of architecture and other parts of the community in order to see what are the possibilities of public areas uh, near these uh, uh, buildings because uh, we think that by uh, promoting the public areas near these buildings we can promote uh, the buildings itself and take the attention of people that are just passing by and not standing uh, near there because as you may see in the picture I'm uh, my apologies, it's not really visible, but um, uh, the condition of these uh, uh, areas are really bad. Uh, nobody is taking care of them. And uh, uh, as I said, they are not promoting people to stay there and uh, uh, have time, uh, have their uh, time and mingle with others, etc. Uh, so we uh, propose this uh, before and after scenes uh, for the municipality of Pristina in order, hopefully, uh, to uh, take their interest in, in investing in this area and also uh, bringing the attention to the uh, modern heritage of Kosovo. Also, we, uh, during our work in the field, we see uh, the potential for different uh, assets, such as uh, this uh, iconic uh, kiosk of the um, uh, Yugos uh, ex-Yugoslavia that was spread in all countries of Yugoslavia and also shown in the MoMA uh, Museum of uh, 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 Modern Art, uh, where uh, actually uh, we have also the potential because these kiosks are everywhere and and they are left uh, abundant and not uh, in function. Uh, and actually, we propose that we can uh, network them by uh, promoting um, them as uh, meeting points, small meeting points, uh, uh, selling coffee, but at, this, this, uh, at the same time, giving information for the uh, modern uh, heritage uh, of uh, Kosovo. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, this was it. Well, thank you, Flocka. That was very informative and very interesting. And it was really interesting to hear that there are two directions of, for the two days we've been more or less talking about gentrification led by cultural heritage, whereas here it's a different sort of, it's a different direction, cultural heritage being destroyed by the local development. And it's really funny that this morning we were talking about parking lots becoming new spaces of social interaction, whereas here, parking lots, are wipe, parking lots are wiping out like social and cultural fabric and layers of the city. So it's just such a small continent, there's so many different 
sort of contradicting things happening. But going from cultural activism in Prizren and Pristina, and that is very interesting what even you are doing now with the modernist um, design and architecture legacy on, in Pristina, I think it's going to be very, very valuable in the foreseeable future. We're going to move to Tirana. We're going to go a bit further down south, also to turn to like very similar concept of treating city as common, so like trying to see the city as a collective fabric of its citizens, also with activist um, Let's say from a very, yeah, same perspective, but uh, different institutional background or yeah, personal background. So, um, hi everyone, officially also, <laughs> I'm Ivo. Um, I'm from Berlin, actually, so it um, <laughs> uh, feels a bit odd uh, to be here as a half German, half Yugoslavian talking about Albania. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, I appreciate being here. So um, I, I will share a bit our experience and work with cultural heritage. Um, or yeah, official or non-official cultural heritage and public space from a rather activist perspective and grassroots organization. So maybe shortly I came to Albania first 2017 uh, in a self-organized project or initiative to reclaim an abandoned uh, military base at the outskirts of Tirana and transform it into a temporary cultural and artistic space uh, for some um, back then still studying um, and this project timely limited over three months with activists and artists from Kirana and village communities outside Kirana um, was a starting point for a longer journey that uh, led us to institutionalizing ourselves in the form of an association um, exactly at the point when COVID hit. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, so the type that also hence the name Terp Bunkeri would be correct. <laughs> Terp Bunkeri meaning at the bunker. Um, yeah, and I just share a short, shortly this journey um, of our starting point from the beginning of uh, reclaiming spaces for communities um, and from our own perspective, of course, with a strong touch or uh, purpose for arts and culture by our own interests and backgrounds, but also uh, at the same time with a clear intention to create commons or actually to reclaim what is common uh, ownership, bunkers, military infrastructure that have been built by forced labor. Um, but also other abandoned public infrastructure of which local museums or abandoned cultural centers um, which are vastly existing as outside Tirana and Tirana not so much anymore <laughs> because they all got destroyed um, yeah to retake them um, not with our own ideas only but together with village communities um, which are mostly yeah and even compared to post Yugoslavia many times on another level of depreciation um, and public infrastructure. Uh, we did that for two years very informally, um, so just as a bunch of uh, youngsters with an idea. And we started all with, uh, with a mapping. So there was a, um, my co-founder Arnen is an architect and did a three year research on abandoned military infrastructure and facilities as neglected public goods and neglected uh, potential and resources. Um, so just one tight, like from that research, maybe to give a rough impression, there are around four and a half million square meters of building surface unused and much more land surface, which is neither natural uh, protected area nor residential area or so, but it's just dead surface um, with for a population of two, nearly three million people it's a lot um, and 
based on this, we went on study trips uh, across the country and met around 60 village communities, identifying from what is, uh, to our perspective, uh, some kind of cultural heritage. They're really interesting structures by architecture and by location and stories behind it. Um, yeah, we, we mapped feasible buildings that uh, are still somehow present in the community, but unused but still accessible or in conditions that would allow easy transformation and utilization of it and um, develop very different concepts and started prototyping. Um, working with uh, three villages uh, using an abandoned school building in the center to create a plastic recycling and artisanal space temporarily which we had to move then, traveled on to another city uh, with that um, equipment and space because electricity and water supply in these villages was not given for that space anymore. Um, went into an abandoned cultural center that was then after a couple of months to be uh, demolished. <laughs> um, so we moved on and um, in the end, yeah, so found ourselves in a situation where we were full of ambitions, um, made some allies found uh, peers along the way, um, other grassroots organizations advocating for public space, but finding themselves as independent organizations in little offices of 35 square meters use, used as an office and community space. Um, so we sat in Tirana and um, the pandemic hit and we were confronted in Tirana with the reality where we found ourselves also in the capital without a public space or a community space, like a cultural center or so, um, where we could gather or work or resort and think how to deal with the pandemic, how to deal with the situation outside Tirana or the situation that we face inside Tirana, which is, uh, yeah, eradication of cultural heritage um, buildings and infrastructure at a pace that is yeah, unparalleled in, in the region, I would say, uh, now, nowadays. So, and this urban development of Tirana and the logic behind it is not only affecting cultural heritage, the last remaining old neighborhoods are, as we speak, and in the past being demolished for apartment blocks. It's also full neighborhoods get eradicated. I don't know who follows some news, but, um, this is on a larger scale, like Belgrade Waterfront. Um, there was Astir uh, neighborhood, now it's Pesmai neighborhood, which affects thousands of citizens that get forcefully evacuated and uh, resettled temporarily, which get stripped of their ownership rights. So, um, and there's Combinat to come, which is a much bigger one, and a uh, neighborhood developed in socialist times, which I would consider by architecture and by the way, this. Yeah, suburb is designed also maybe from some perspective cultural heritage, um, which will also be soon gone. And the National Theatre was, uh, and the demolishment of that uh, building was uh, one traumatic turning point, um, or let's say the last nail in the coffin of our perception of what we might be able to do with existing mechanisms of public mobilization, media attention, even inter alliances on institutional level, um, Europa Nostra, even like jumping in. So uh, what you said about pressuring governments or institutions and let's say make, making them feel embarrassed or ashamed obviously doesn't function in Albania. <laughs> there is no shame for, for anything. Um, and in combination with uh, a non-existent culture of uh, squatting or rallying and mobilizing protests for civic interests. It's, yeah, but we started to get the feeling we need, might need to, to slow down and um, rethink everything mm -hmm. and also form alliances that, that exist in your, all your countries or networks, but we, such kind of alliances uh, which we don't have yet. For example, networks of even 
a such civil society doesn't exist in Albania, uh, not to speak of a network of independent spaces or culture networks. Um, so at this moment, all around these thoughts, uh, we registered as an organization and thought, okay, we take on these uh, learnings. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put it here. Um, we take on these learnings and insights to at first establish a space in Tirana because Tirana didn't have a space where we could gather. So when the theater, just to this short anecdote, when the theater got demolished overnight, uh, I was at home with my family in Tirana and because I lived there during that time uh, and Arnen and our other friends and activists were actually inside the theater um, and when we tried to mo mobilize in the protests uh, the next day um, there was a, this sudden reaction which got cracked down by the police um, and then there was nothing but silent trauma so I, it was the saddest, pro like coming from Berlin, having traveled around a lot, like this was the saddest protest I ever saw in my life. Um, because you just found 500 people really shocked and mostly in silence, surrounded by, of course, media and police. But there was no articulation uh, of any anger or protest, it was just shock, like pe people crying and just having like an energy uh, pointing nowhere and there were no resources. So we, this was like a day they showed like stripped naked that there is no structure um, that can protect any interests so for public space but also for uh, marginalized belongings, whatever, for communities, um, different ones. And we tried to mobilize. Uh, afterwards and to settle like uh, 48 hours later and we didn't have a single space so we met in a basement under a, a bar. 20 organizations from pol political activists, um, the whole cultural scene, civic scene um, and nobody had a space where they could host each other and nobody had resources to bring to a protest even a microphone <laughs> and speakers uh, so it was ground zero, um, at least it felt for us like, like that. Um, and after two, three, um, it, yeah, not so fruitful meetings in terms of finding a consensus and a common language between, like, we have a common purpose but we don't find an agreement how to organize and mobilize because uh, we're also a low trust society and there is no, was no big civic movement besides the student movement, um, it, dis it dissolved. So our consequence was to um, shift from we are Tegbunkeri, we work with rural communities to um, we want to create an independent cultural space in Tirana for um, all these friends, peers, informal groups and organizations to gather frequently, to create, to produce. It's a difference if you have to meet in a co-working cafe um, or any cafe <laughs> uh, or if you have a space on your own terms and at your own times and with its own dynamics, something like magazine outlet. We have seen great examples that we look up to from Albania and uh, yeah, that as we have seen in the previous panel. And so since half a year we run such a space on a much smaller scale than uh, other examples so far. So we, it was already hard to find a space to rent. As I said, like dynamics are crazy, even on the private market, but we, are, we luckily have a small space now, office and community space, garden and small magazine of 100 square meter, overall maybe 250 square meter. And so far more than 20 organizations and groups are using it. Um, and it's still in the making. Like uh, since three days we have some tables. <laughs> um, and we gathered 30 chairs in the first month somehow like on flea markets and so on. So. It, um, but we have some long-term security and confidence that we will manage to build it. Uh, and in parallel, we try to establish 
an informal network or to push for an informal network to uh, manifest and uh, the uh, new mechanism, new alliances and new way of trusting and supporting each other. So this is a network called MOKI, Mobile Open Culture and Innovation, which is uh, Yes, it's an informal network founded of 20 by 22 grassroots organizations in the region, so Kosovo, Montenegro, uh, Romania, Serbia and Albania. Um, 14 from them are from Albania and these 14 we are technically all independent organizations <laughs> that are not uh, municipal run youth centers or so. Um, but all independent organizations in, in the country um, that understand themselves as such. Uh, um, and we were based on some shared principles of finding mechanisms to support each other for it, um, by resources, by experiences, and because fundraising is a challenge there, there's no domestic funding. I mean, Albania's Ministry of Culture has an annual budget of 453,000 euro. This is roughly 10% of the Kosovo government budget of the Ministry of Culture. So this is the reality we are talking. Um, yeah. yeah. Edi Rama mm. is uh, sorry, but he's running his own space. And no, it's not 10% of, of the not. national. It is the Kosovo. ministry. Albania's Ministry of Culture has an annual budget which is 10% of the Kosovo Ministries of Culture budget. So, but population three times higher um, or bigger. And yeah, or to talking municipalities have a cultural budget uh, of roughly 80 cents per citizen per year. Um, like the vast majority of like the smaller municipalities outside Tiran. So that's what we are talking. So 50% of the budget is for the managing director of the department, just for the salaries, and there, there is no programming. Um, so what we, what we are trying to achieve with this, or what we are aiming at with this little network, or emergent network, is building our capacity to advocate for each other and together because individually we have no negotiation power, there's no access to uh, public institutions on any level. Like we are, we are talking of having in Kukas, for example, a large uh, cultural palace with a huge theater stage, very interesting architecture, which is not open to a single independent organization or youth group, for example, to produce, create or even have a chess club. Um, and, or in other municipalities, there are rotting palace of cultures, theatres um, and industrial complexes. And, yeah, not even an independent organisation, just a bunch of people who try to do something. So, our idea was to generate mobile hardware, hence the name Mobile Open Culture, to share our equipment, for example, get mobile cinema equipment and have it start to build a public audience, finding mechanisms to reclaim public spaces occasionally, to slowly sensibilize the public there. Yeah, there is some potential actually to stand up for something or to just act because the level of informality that we are facing and seeing mainly as a threat or um, as a big enemy um, can be also used as an advantage because technically we can also do what we want. Uh, as long as we don't insult and fight actively and rhetorically to hard the government. But producing in public is possible and it's the only way we can actually produce because uh, there is no private space to produce. There is, uh, the on there's only one independent performance uh, arts collective in Albania which founded itself uh, a year ago and they still don't have a place for rehearsal. So they are sometimes rehearsing in Zeta Gallery, which is a small independent art gallery, um, or they occasionally maybe use our space, which has a much, much worse conditions uh, for performing arts, um, or they look around. 
und rent a yoga space or find a yoga or a fitness studio space somehow for free. Um, so we believe uh, what now bridging to that panel and this whole co research conversation, how can museums and how can cultural heritage actually uh, be, yeah, create space for marginalized belongings and can become an active part um, or supporter of civil society and active part in developing inclusive societies is by opening gates to its physical spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's a very paradox uh, reality that there is such a desperate need for a space on one hand and such an abundance of space on the other um, that doesn't know what to do with it or how to maintain it <laughs> many times and this is then in Albania maybe extreme but this is a reality in all our countries in the region at least. Yeah. Thank you. You were talking about objects and old infrastructure in the rural parts that were belonging to community and they were just there. And I think even the idea of unclassified objects and infrastructure having the weight of belonging to community, so not being protected by the status of heritage, also should count for something. You know, that community belongs to that infrastructure and vice versa. But the struggles that you are um, describing, and I must say very so, in a sense also it's painful to so realize that that's right there, it's so far and so near from many practices that we have in the last few days. It's very much in line with the necessity of having like a regional southeastern, western Balkan right to the city movement. Um, yet again, you know, like being translated to the context here. Uh, so in that line of the right to the city and right to the public place, we're going to turn to um, artistic ways of claiming that right and uh, reshaping or re sort of like even tackling the idea and twisting the idea what is a public space with the um, artistic interventions and asking the questions, is that space democratic? What does that space do and who for? Philip Ivana. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Anna, for the nice introduction. It's really a pleasure to be here. I'm super excited. Sorry for not being able to attend the previous sessions, but uh, hopefully I'm going to read the... I, I, I got the email with the presentation, so I'm going to find time to look it up. Uh, mm, yes, we are uh, co-managing an organization called Faculty of Things That Can Be Learned. It exists since 2003, but officially maybe its main activity is uh, in 2006. It's called the uh, ACTO Festival for Contemporary Arts. This year we're going to make it for the 17th time. And uh, in the frames of our organization, we're not going to talk about ACTO in this talk context. I'm just going to briefly mention what we do, except for the three performances that, that we're going to uh, expose here. We do, uh, we do educational program for young uh, artists, visual artists. We have an award for them that, uh, that uh, means going to New York for two months. Uh, we go to different kind of courses, programs. Uh, workshops and uh, um, this is one of the strands that we're going to present here and it's basically connected to working in these cultural heritage sites mainly located in Skopje although ACTO festival uh, which ran for 15 years in Bitola which is a different city in, uh, in Macedonia was also like kind of really trying to to unsurface uh, or to surface actually uh, old spaces, abandoned spaces of cultural heritage. But this is a different story. So uh, our plan is today is basically for me to give a short overview of the context. I'm going to try to frame maybe somehow, I'm not sure that I'm going to make it still, but I'm going to try to frame uh, the three performances and then Philip is going to go in details what we've done in, this, in, this, uh, in these endeavors. So I think that uh, I started my presentation with something that was already mentioned, I think, but, it's, but still, I'm going to try to, to also write, uh, read what I wrote. So uh, Yes. Uh, so, the public spaces and places in both socialist societies are victims of the neoliberal liberal restructuring that depoliticize, erode, and privatize them. 
shrinking them to a site for a passive uh, reception of consumerist and nationalist messages instead of being a place for nurturing democratic political subjectivities. This tendency is a danger that threatens the rights and participation of citizens in democratic processes in society, freedom of speech and rule of law, and excluded, excludes all, uh, all considered different and, and untypical, forcefully silencing the plurality of voices. There is no public life without a public and open space intended for, pub, for express, expression of public opinion. Or uh, as sociologist Richard Sennett would say, as in Roman times, the participation in rest public day is often reduced to socializing and public life forums such as the city are falling apart. With the coronavirus pandemic, it became even clearer that technology, telephones, and social networks have become an extension not only of mental but also of physical existence and produce automatic and temporary creation of private as well as public space. This aspect also defines participation in political life and the change of public life's li life leads, leads to a change of the private one in which we develop our own personali uh, per personality differently. Privatization is something that's kind of really crucial in these all, all three endeavor, artistic endeavors, is the ideological driver of the post-social transition and the restoration of capitalism. But, but, but this uh, transitional society was sub uh, subjected to a sudden and rapid privatization of social capital through a political decision, which according to, to Boris Groys is an artificial political construct as well as nationalization is. Or as he adds, a political decision was made to switch from building up communism to building up capitalism. And to that end, in complete harmony with classical Marxism, to produce artificial class of private property owners who would become the principal protagonist of this whole process. Thus, there was no return to the market as a state of nature, but rather a revelation of a highly artificial character of the market itself. In this process, public spaces began to shrink, and all this accompanied by a weak history of insurgency, tons of information and images, false, true, and half true. The exhaustion of political scandals and corrupt collaborations happening on daily basis, leaning on the trauma caused by the events of the 90s, polarized discussion and not agonistic, it raised public communication to the level of hysteria, judge judgmental remarks, and provocations and hatred. And this is the point basically where we also, this is the situation actually we, we live set. This has led to a loss of argumentation, unconstructive participation in building democratic processes, underestimation of expertise, and even greater polarization and divisions in society. Anthropologist Gonen Yanev writes, uh, writes that the public sphere has turned into an arena for political party skirmishes, in which there is no room for an already developed, devalued expert analysis. And, and he has. Framing any different opinion and something that comes from the opposition camp, a public debate was killed and um, became impossible. It can also lead to growing conflicts and intolerance on ethnic, gender, and sexual grounds. Conflict in public <coughs> space can take the form of violent antagonism when it is not given the opportunity to have legitimate chan channels of expression or to take an agonistic form. We need a non-polarized society. A society that will produce a space for exchange of opinions, ideas that will reflect the right to use the city, public space, freedom of speech, and the right to personal expression. We need a space where democracy can be practiced as an example for other institutions. We need to create the conditions for the modern agora. And basically the context for these uh, uh, three examples, public performances, and name it the art of, of the square, uh, and it's basically somehow connected to, the, to Stavridis' uh, squares in movement, basically connecting it to the Arab Spring protests and the protests in Athens uh, starting after the economic crisis. But still, I'm calling it the art of the square because uh, these projects and several others that uh, I'm going to present another occasion, not here, uh, signifies for, for me an intervention in reality but not individually in the special domains, in the factories for the workers, in front of the parliament for the workers that came from the liquidation processes, in front of the universities for the, student, for the, uh, for the students, in front of the hospitals for the health workers, in front of judiciary, the assembly, the ministers, but everywhere for everyone. The art of the square uses the platform in a literal 
uh, sense or creating in a symbolical space to show and present what it stands for in front of the largest audience and to invite as many like-minded people as possible. This art uh, of the square is temporary, interventional, although intends to have a long-lasting effect. Uh, it talks about domination and exclusion and it is in constant conflict with exclusion tendencies. It detects problems of shortcomings in a particular context, raises questions about what to do, and suggests how to react in transform. And through that struggle, the public space is recreated. The art of the square brings together various voices that have expressed their satisfaction and defiance as a coveted idea of drawing a line of togetherness rather than individual flaws. Moreover, as an opportunity to, to form moving squares or, um, or micro-public spaces, of an imaginary artistic community that re-establish the public or the public in the common, precisely by claiming the right to ownership of all as a symbolic place for collective politicization. We have to work towards the common, from the public to common spaces, or as Stavridis puts it, the realm of the common emerges in constant confrontation with state-controlled atomized autom public space. And that is one of the most urgent tasks that will, uh, that will lead to the rethinking of common spaces in which together we create a future equal for all. So yeah, Philip, I'm <laughs> yes, after this short. Philip, now yes. you. Now you please, please <laughs> illustrate <laughs> what I've what I read. You have to be as smart. <laughs> he's, as even, smart. he's even smarter. No. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there is no competition. Artistically. Let's say artistically. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> I don't know how much time we have, but... You have 13 minutes, 12. 12, okay. Yeah. So I'll present uh, three case studies. Actually, it's part of my artistic practice and work that I've worked in the past almost 10 years. And I will, and somehow, that what Ivana said, it illustrates all this. <laughs> this is, but uh, I will start with the project, it's called the Cinema in the, uh, the first, actually, uh, I will start with the project, uh, present, a presentation of the uh, the project that we started started for the building in Skopje. It's called the Resi uh, Railway Residential Building. So shortly, the, it's important, the context, but I will focus on these three, 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 three buildings. Uh, it is period in 2014-15 when uh, there, there were protests every day. We were protesting against the regime at that time uh, with the focus of preserving the public space, but was mostly this, this period when we started this project, uh, we, were, we were protesting that, that protest for me is very important in the context of this practice uh, uh, for defending the modernistic uh, city trade center called Gatatsa. And we started this, pro this protest lasted almost three years and it ended with referendum, local referendum where the citizens have opportunity for the first time to, to vote what they think about the Skopje Barak. I hope all of you noticed what, what happened to Skopje and uh, what it visited is now. And we, and we started a project, regional project at that time with the partners from Zagreb, Shadowcasters, Basashi Sienki, their artistic uh, and theater collective from Zagreb. and. Uh, one collective from Belgrade, uh, there was Supervisual. Supervisual and so Skopje, Belgrade and, and Zagreb. The idea was to make a project uh, that the idea was, together with Boris Bakal, we invented this idea to make theater performances about uh, some concrete building. And the, we titled the project, If Buildings Could Talk. We referred to Wim Wenders, there is one film essay he made for architect, uh, Arati Zusaki, it was for Venice Biennial in 2010. So we were referring, to, so the idea was to, to translate the urban context in theater context. And we started to make research which buildings or what, sh what should be the criteria for selecting the uh, concrete urban, urban area or building or square. And we were thinking in between this defending of uh, cultural her modern heritage of Gotetze or another brutalistic building, for, which is very important for the history of Skopje. And in this research project, uh, process, we, uh, at the end, decided to work on a railway building. It's a 
social housing. People still live there. It was building in the in the, in the end of forties. It's in the center of Skopje, mm -hmm. and it's very unique uh, example of. Uh, it's like a not typical modernistic building, but it's like a beginning of modernism after the Second World War was built by a Russian architect. What is very, uh, why we decided to work on this space, what is very unique for the space is there are many sharing spaces for the community. So there is yard inside, you can see from this uh, picture, but what is the most interesting about this building all, is that there is cinema inside the building, huge cinema, eight meters high, around 200 meters, mm -hmm. square meters area. And it was designed, and it's so from the right side you have apartment, from the right you have huge public space cinema that was designed for the community at that time to, to share it, to have meetings there. Uh, it was built for the railway company of Yugoslavia, so workers live here, from director to, the, to some driver of the, how it's called, of the train. And, and when, uh, when the train came to Skopje from, was, uh, from uh, Ljubljana, for example, they were sleeping in some of the apartments here, the drivers, and then back. So it was like a small community of the uh, railway company. And cinema was for us very important space, and maybe the inspiration to choose to work on this building. At that time, and it still is, but at that time it was like abundant. No, uh, uh, so we were. This is how it looks. Okay. So the challenge was how to make theater performance with the community here, with people with, we don't know them, and we have we, how, how to how to start to 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 make this production. So these are I will not go in details. Although maybe later we can speak about our tactics and artistic approaches that we use. Uh, so we started to build trust. That is very important uh, thing, I think, in all this process. So this is the first meeting with the with the people who live there. We met three guys who were mm -hmm. some of them are, were born in the building. They knew everything about the building. They were in love with the building, but they don't know what to do. So we somehow we f found the interest that we should work together, and we started to work together. Mm -hmm. So in the next two years, we organized several activities in the cinema. The main focus was to build trust with them. So we organized our festival here in, in the cinema, debates, exhibitions. So it was interesting for the local community. So they, many people came, but it was uh, like, they realized that they can be used for public events. Because after the privatization in the 90s, uh, the cinema, all apartments are privatized, belongs to the citizens, so to the residents. So they can sell it. And there were some offers from some businessmen that they wanted to, to buy the, the space or to rent for the next 20 years. So this danger was here all the time, like one of the... Uh, and, but they didn't want to, to give it. So our deal was to show them that it should, stay, it should stay public. So we organized, for example, a reading of the urbanistic plans of this area, different activities, but together with in communication with the with these people there, and uh, for example, one of the processes was uh, we printed the architectural plan of the building, and we were together with the residents uh, writing stories apartment by apartment in the past 70 years. So that's how we were writing the scenario for the for the theater performance at the end. These are the three people, the protagonists of the story. Some, some photos from the exhibition, so. All different activities. Yeah. Done. We organize conference there. But all the time on the same level with the people who live there. We involve them in, in our teams and, and debates. And the first more visible after two mm -hmm. years of work with them, presentation was uh, theater performance guiding tour, educational guiding tour in the building. So all these stories that we have for the building uh, together with four actresses, professional, we 
designed in a form of a guiding performance tool with the audience. And it was presented in, on Mod Festival 2017, Theatre Festival. So we organized like, actually, I will not go into details, but the idea was to, to use theater tools or signs just to tell the story about the building. So we started from the public space, from outside, and we ended in the private apartments. So the audience entered in the, in the, some of the apartments of the people who live in the building. The idea was that we transformed their private space into a stage. So they became actors in one moment. So everything like was, one-to-one -one, uh, relation. It was very important for us because, we, because in all these projects that I will show, the idea is that the public space and the building is the role. It's not, we are not, it's, it's, it's the role in all performances. So it, in our case, this was the, well, the building was the, was the role. That's how I look. Can I add something? Okay. I just want to add and connect to the to Flaka to your presentation somehow. Like yes, Philip is a bit going somehow in details because it's a, it was a big process. But then, like we really tried to move the attention to the building amidst the chaos, chaos of this COVID 2014 project. Like this building really seemed like an oasis of cherishing the ideas of solidarity, of collectivity, of being together, and of people jointly working on something that's really important. And that's their place of living, you know, how to, how to really take care of it. And this is also like rethinking of the ideas of commons. And why we, we, or what we knew, our strategy was also the local municipality was really crucial. So we also talked with the local mayor, with the mayor of the, this municipality, to really renovate the building and the whole cinema. And unfortunately, as you also said, I think the channels, after five years, years of, of conversations, different kind of uh, agreements, you know, like, uh, they, for example, we signed an agreement that the building is going to be renovated. And we really kind of celebrated this moment to make a public event, you know, like, so just to make this really kind of, uh, to put it in public, and nothing happened. You know, like, nothing happened after, since 2015, <coughs> really kind of trying to, to push the municipality forward to renovate this really important, crucial building in, in the, the center of Skopje, nothing happens still, you know. And uh, I think that uh, artistically, and I think that all, every, all, the, all the strength that we got, for example, making performances, conferences, I don't know, different kind of projects, we even got, you know, like one pr really big prize for this, uh, for this performance, the local authorities didn't care about it. So we, so we are back again with the new mayor thinking how to, what, is, what should be our starting point this time? So with this building, yes, yes, maybe, yeah. Maybe we well, did something more. Center. So yeah. I'm just like trying to, <laughs> to okay. move the story to the next. Right. Yes, for me it was artistically important, but this line between life and art, like because we went, we were all the time playing with this, and, and, and in one moment, because we were inviting on every door, there are 74 apartments, for every event we were inviting apartment by apartment the people who live there, so there are no so big, so much, so big interest. And in, and in one of the performances, for example, we put, we will use these tactics, we put the audience in a role of a residence. So the idea was that uh, they are like, like on a meeting of, a, of the, House Council, and the idea was that the, the, the public space belongs to people who, who care about that. So we were, so, so this, this was very important for us. And in different uh, performances, we, we, the end was different. For example, one of the endings was, we invited one uh, famous music band, Fulton, they were playing. So we wanted to show to the, to the people there that it's this kind, what kind of activities can, be, can, can happen there. And everything was, the, we had really good collaboration with the, the so we played on different uh, uh, weather conditions, or we played on rains, so that was part of the artistic approach, like, we used the, the context as a part of, as, as a stage. One of the performances ended with forum theater debate, I think Klaske was in that, no, November 2018. 
then we organize another activities with the mayors at that time there were local elections so we invited all mayors to sign demands of the civil society organizations so we wanted to show them that the space can be used for different activities then we organize uh, open call for artistic for architect student architectural competition for the space and we organize an exhibition and debate so different kind of activities with focus on public on public uh, how to say uh, content. Mm. Five minutes, three minutes. One or two. It's a big presentation. It's a big project, okay. We tra <laughs> you fast forward. We transform yeah. then. Yeah. This is the performance. Yes, then uh, we were invited to shortly, shortly to participate on Prague mm -hmm. Quadriennial for space design of performance in space and international exhibition in Prague. So every pavilion, national pavilion, has like space for exhibition five to five to five. So, and we decided to to present the work on site-specific work on the building. So we transform, we make like in smaller scale for the whole performance mm -hmm. in a small performance installation. So we make like smaller build, smaller scale of the building with one actress. We have four on the site specific. And we were lucky that we, we won the main award, Golden Trigger, for, for this project. And that made the project and all this struggle for the, for the railway building more visible. Mm. And then we, back, then we went back in Skopje and I organized another event signing content with the mayor publicly and it was called let's keep it public let's keep the cinema public so this is the signing of the contract with the mayor for so three years effort. ago so huge effort and everything that we organized was public the the, the contract everything it was part of art from this distance this is more an artistic approach than administrative but <laughs> And then we have premiere on Mod Festival again in Skopje, on the opening, and then on BTEF, and then in Kino Cultura. So for me, it was very important this transformation from site specific to artistic context, but all the time speaking about the importance of this public space. And then we organized different activities with the Academy of Damo and Prague in the cinema. The idea was to, to program the space for different activities. This is one performance from Boris Bakal. Okay, just shortly. Mm -hmm. So this journey <laughs> lasted five years and it, we learned a lot from these processes. And uh, two, three, three years ago, uh, there was a there is Universal Hall in Skopje here, also in the center, near to this building. Mm. It was donated by 35 countries after the earthquake. And it was like Universal Hall, mo mostly for music, but very important spot in Skopje. And um, in one moment, I don't know how, appeared the idea in public that the, the city government want to put down the building and to, 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 make, to design park there but to build an, another universal hall in another place. And huge debate appeared in public, and the, 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 the people were divide, uh, divided their opinions. They were, one, but it was hysteric because it was, I don't know, like one year after the changing of previous government, or maybe two years. And this need, that's my opinion, of this, this need of catharsis, because we will all the time while we were fighting against the project Scopy 2014, we were saying that we will put down the monuments when the government will change. But this never happened. So this need of catharsis was still here somehow. And this hysteria of debating about some building, like Universal Hall, nothing special. Uh, for me, not special. Because it uh, was very, I don't know, it, was, it lasted two months all the time. 
And from what the festival, organized by, by Youth Cultural Center, they invited us to make another performance for this building. So it was interesting challenge for us, how to make, what to do now, because it's different from railway building. We have short time for production, but we, uh, our main question was, how should art now answer to this, or what art should do now in the, in the peak of the debate? What to do? Because one, one side was to put down, the other side was, let's reconstruct it. And we went inside with uh, several, uh, 10 young students of, of actors, and, we, and what is also important, the building was closed officially five years because of some technical problems. And we went inside the building during the, the that was the COVID pandemic, and also in the, and we produced the theater performance for the building again. So we produced, so we used the, 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 the space, the public space as a text. So this is, I didn't mention this in the previous, but the approach that we use is that the public space and this heritage we use as a text. And from this text, we are producing a performance. We are playing the, this how it looks. The same uh, building is in Sofia. It was built in the 70s, I think. And it, it was burned, mm -hmm. yes, in the 80s. So architecturally, nothing special. But emotionally, for city, important. So here we raised <coughs> different questions. That our, our proposal was, let's burn the building. We don't want con reconstruction or put it down. Let's burn and build new society again. But and there were some reactions from the audience after the performance. They said, "After your performance, I know m my my opinion about the problem is more clear." Which was <laughs> for me, you know, because it's not some. Uh, with, which I think was very important for us. And the third one, uh, I call this like a trilogy of performances about the buildings. Uh, last year in September, in, uh, in another context, there was an anniversary of 30 years of independence of our government, uh, state. The government organized different activities. We applied it. We got some grant and we decided to make another performance for another building. This is post office in Skopje, a very important building for this brutalistic after, after uh, earthquake. Uh, the uh, very important post earthquake period in Skopje. It was built in 74, part of this master plan of, of Kenzo Tange, uh, built by the architect Janko Konstantinov and Borkolazinski painter. They worked together, they were part of mo one modernistic group, and they designed together the, the space. And they, they are very nice, mu this is how it looks. There, very there were very nice murals inside. But the building was burnt in 2013. And it still left the ruins of the burnt uh, object in the center of the capital. The, 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 the space is left like this. A very nice architectural space. So we decided in the context of uh, this celebrating anniversary to question the idea what is republic today what is respublica today and we call the performance referring to the writing letters dear republic so all performance was like letter to the republic to the republic to to the values of the republic because our republic our one of the theses was that was built on this anti-fascist uh, constitution after 45 or on the contrary we have the nationalists who say it's not true, we exist 2,000 <laughs> years <laughs> as, a, as a country. And we say, okay, let's re-question this. So we make this performance. We use similar approach. 
like guiding tour inside the building, using the public space as a scenography, and but also reminding about the importance here through this public space of, of post office of the values of the of the Republica. Office. Not with the performance. Oh, the photo of the performance. <laughs> <laughs> Let's finish with this one, huh? Good. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, but a lot of material. I would like to speak more, but maybe in some. We have we have a round table now after this, so like definitely there's going to be more opportunity to hear from Philip, who's also an architect. We forgot to <laughs> underline that that we have another one in the room. No, thank you very much for that, and thank you even though for even underlining that ongoing like a Groundhog Day struggle of signing and debating and negotiating and communicating with the local administrations and it made me think and it's the same similar i think in the entire region the administrations one thing that they developed so efficiently in the last 30 years is the culture of avoidance and delay yeah. <laughs> they, they that the serious like if if if, you, if we could go to stereotypes of germans being efficient and you know nordic countries being reliable but very social like the systems in our countries are brilliant at avoiding and delaying and just yeah. like twisting and pushing corners and everything, making you wait, never being blunt about it, like yeah. just, you know, just get off my program, but just like keeping yeah. you lukewarm constantly That's a and not doing anything with it. And it's just brewing. The situation is constantly brewing and it's such an unfair position to be in. Mm -hmm. But to turn on that note, going to administration and institution, we're going to come to Irena. And uh, going back to what Eva said, we gonna, Irena's going to tell us or explain to us how institutions open that door of cultural heritage for the communities and for different so social actors. Um, and social agents and different forms of agency and practices to basically enter and use the space as their own through different sort of methods of participation, inclusion and accessibility. So, Irena. Thank you, Anna. Uh, thank you very much to Klaske and to Biljana because I cannot explain my feelings right now. I am surrounded by the scientists in an area which is not very known for me. I'm working in a museum. I'm a tourismologist. But I only uh, can say that I care for visitors, different type of visitors. And uh, this is really, for me, a value uh, to meet everybody. Uh, which are in this hall, and I hope that um, you infected me to learn more about <laughs> this area. But um, I will show you two examples, which maybe it is participation project and accessibility. So you will decide at the end of the presentation. Uh, so I, I'm also board uh, member of Balkan Museum Network. Mm -hmm. So I have to say that I'm a proud member because I learned a lot and I met a lot of people and I was particip I participated in many projects mm -hmm. organized by Balkan Museum Network. Um, also, I like to thank Balkan Museum Network because in all of small grants, 
Uh, many of them were implemented in Macedonia, in Skopje Museum, and in Bitola. Actually, I'm working there. This is National Institution Institute for Protection of Cultural Monuments and Museum Bitola. We are responsible for cultural heritage monuments, for protection, for renovation, restoration, for archaeological site Heraclea. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, exhibition halls in our museum. Uh, we have also memory room of Kemal Ataturk because this building was a military school where he was a soldier student actually. And uh, at the beginning when I accepted to be here, uh, I said several questions uh, in my uh, summary. Uh, what museums and similar cultural institutions can or must do related to this question, how issues of human rights, convention, national regulation are related to cultural institutions, are and are cultural institutions socially responsible organization, what is institutional power of museums or other institutions, and how they ca uh, can create unity of both on social and political level. Is it possible to raise public awareness and how? And can museum staff hear voices of excluded citizens, artists, students, and people with disabilities? This presentation will explain ex uh, questions from uh, my side, my experience, and my opinion about this. Um, I will present a project uh, which was a uh, European uh, project, uh, large-scale create, Creative Europe projects, with 12 partners from eight countries and 11 sub-projects from Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Poland, Norway, Croatia, and Macedonia. Uh, there, were, uh, there are universities and uh, museums from those countries. Uh, the, uh, that project was uh, finished three years ago, before corona pandemic, and uh, it links culture and technology in a participa uh, participative uh, approach. The goal of the project was to create uh, and use a system for increased citizen participation in the area of urban art, urban development, and new ways of planning. Mm -hmm. there, will, uh, there was a lot of sub-projects and um, uh, this project provides uh, different options for a high diversity of social groups uh, that want to be a part of public urban art, space development, and cultural city redesign. Uh, our sub-project was 4D because we add time to 3D. It means that the citizens can receive time-related information about uh, everything and through traveling in time, they explore historical data and then artist, artists uh, were inspired by the uh, fourth dimension and they suggested solution. Solution of what? I will tell you later. Uh, the focus groups were citizens, artists and students. We organized a platform where uh, citizens had a chance to upload their ideas and to, to give us uh, solutions for those who, who were not with us. Because we organized a lot of meetings, exhibition for artists, and of course children. Uh, on the left side are children in our museum. Uh, who gave us idea how to organize a public space, Fontaine, do you remember? Fontaine in the front of museum, which was in danger <laughs> because uh, some people politically or how can I say, municipality, ministry, thought that, that uh, Fontaine should be ruined because it's ugly and it was a debate. 
And we invited the local and regional artists and local artists. We discussed a lot with the high school students. That's the Fontaine, which not exist anymore. I have to tell you because it's too ugly. And <laughs> uh, local artists uh, uh, gave us. Well, at least it wasn't burnt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was ruined. I have uh, photos at that moment. And the local, local artists and the international artists gave a solution. Solution were created in 3D. It was very interesting to see uh, their solution. And also, we have uh, three hotspots on that project. The second one is uh, Yenyama, which is on a wooden market in Bitola. Let's say, destroyed surroundings and the beautiful cultural heritage. And the third one here is number one, is uh, build, it, there are buildings, stone buildings, which belongs to army of Yana, Yugoslav army. And uh, I told them uh, on the lunchtime, and now those buildings are ours, museum buildings. And Japan. 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 Officially, Japan is ours. It's uh, armory, armory, armory. armory, yes. And I hope that we will have nice projects for uh, Japan. <laughs> uh, this is our management team. Uh, and uh, here I put on the slide uh, several uh, Design, so design solutions. Nice and beautiful for renovation mm -hmm. of the fountain, but now it's a different story. And uh, here also I'm presenting uh, 3D models for Yeni Hamam, mm -hmm. how the artist say they wish to see the space around the Hamam and also Japan, eh? and they had a chance to express themselves in text and 3D. And uh, we see that uh, all of them are giving us solutions, suggestions to keep Japan for social inclusion, for performances, for theater, and for, for art, of course. And if we have time later, we can see some of them, how it looks like in 3D. Okay, conclusion. So, <laughs> uh, the second, uh, the second uh, project which I want to present is my favorite because I was pioneer in this uh, field. Uh, I know that many of my colleagues in museums know about conventions and human rights in the United Nations, many of them don't know about it, but that was a challenge for me to apply for three years specialization for learning about accessibility for museums. And uh, I was representative from Macedonia and together with uh, those uh, seven ladies, we uh, learned too much about accessibility and uh, there is a many, many uh, lessons about accessibility, but li I like the most uh, enjoy access to place for cultural performances and services. So I mean access of museums and uh, equal uh, access on equal basis with others is the most important. But uh, when I was infected by uh, learning about accessibility, I, start, I, start, uh, I started to see surroundings and I see that nothing is accessible in physical uh, sense of meaning. So there are a lot of museums with uh, many steps and with many stairs and uh, people cannot uh, come and be our uh, visitors. And we are working on social model which means that we, are, we don't care about the uh, diagnosis of people, 
individual, but we think about environment. And uh, we, are, we don't ask people and visitors what's wrong with you, but uh, we try to remove the barriers. And we don't take personal information, of course, and we do practical information. So uh, the first challenge for me was when blind people from Bitola called me and asked me to go on archaeological site in Heraklea. I was shocked because I said that there is nothing for you. <laughs> I, I was pretty bad in that. And uh, I said, uh, we can go, but uh, you will uh, uh, listen the story about Heraklea, but we can do that in a museum. And that was the first uh, motive for me to start and learn how to be, to how to involve people and uh, make uh, them accessible, our museum and our cultural heritage. Another obstacle was our museum is cultural heritage uh, building. I cannot do nothing with st uh, stairs, with the steps. So in that period, I bought a uh, lift car which brings people in a wheelchair to the uh, halls, mm -hmm. and yes. And then we started with access surveys of buildings and museums, which is a very nice uh, research for buildings. And then we suggest museums uh, what to do to become accessible in physical uh, sense, but also in intellectual, multi-sensory sense. And uh, we have experience with Museum of Vojvodina. Me, uh, I have experience with archaeological museum in Skopje, my museum, of course, Museum of Macedonian Struggle, and many more, which are very interested to become accessible. And uh, there was a lot of uh, training workshops. We implement uh, many of the knowledge in uh, museums. So on this photo, I don't know, I prepared for contrast last night presentation to be more visible. But we started to prepare to produce tactile images. It's a very uh, specific process where you are taking a painting and the designer is making a contour on the special paper full of capsules, swelling paper, and we put in a machine, which is a donation, and we are organizing tactile exhibitions for people with disabilities, especially for blind people. We are preparing tactile objects. We are organizing workshops for deaf children, for blind children. And also we put QR code on every paintings in the museums. So by scanning, they can listen a story about the art. And also they can see sign language video, explanation, interpretation. So this is the sign language video. Uh, left is uh, scanning of code. And we have a lot of uh, fun workshops for Roma community for uh, children in the villages because they are really excluded in uh, our surroundings. And uh, we celebrate the different uh, things. They like to draw, <laughs> to make a clay uh, copies of objects. And uh, we are organizing theater inside the museum for children from the villages because when they come once they want to see many things and we are organizing fun but they are still learning in our museum. We have concepts that museum are for all and museum are to go. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, there are a lot of people who cannot come, people in Starsky. Uh, Oh, uh, in, in homes, yes. yes, so we go there and we bring the uh, copies of objects in a Hewitt case and uh, we share with them our stories and we give them a knowledge because they like to listen about the 
cultural heritage. And also during pandema, uh, pandemia, in Corona time, uh, we, actually me, <laughs> I visited several times school uh, with the deaf children. They uh, like to draw, they like to play mm -hmm. with us, they like to learn, so it's a really pleasure to be with them because they know how to uh, say thank you, you know. And uh, here I have an uh, example of a workshop in Magaza, which is a, a little gallery which belongs to people in <laughs> Bitola. But I use that for blind children. And I put the name of that workshop, Feel Like, like Home, because I bought for the children uh, slippery. <laughs> it was very wet. so. Uh, they learn a lot about the objects, about the art, and uh, we started to learn Braille letter because uh, this group was mixed, visually impaired, blind, and without parents, children. And uh, we shared between us uh, value to know Braille letter, you know, just to give opportunity to blind girls to be, you know, attractive and uh, to be important in the class. So again, if uh, I ask myself about the first questions, <laughs> so to when museums and cultural heritage belong, I will say because, because I care for every target group. Uh, I care about the visitors for my museum. I think that museums and cultural heritage belong to all of my target groups. And uh, it depends if museum and another colleagues, another museum can do similar things about the uh, many target groups and many for community, for children, for people with disabilities. I hope that they will read if they don't know about the human rights conventions. But it's, it is not depends only regulation. It depends on you because this is not my job. So um, uh, I can tell you that I receive a lot of uh, attention by the people because uh, I use media to raise awareness about the accessibility, about the participation. And uh, I'm lucky because they always here to to pub, to announce about uh, my workshops, my uh, activities. So thanks for that. And uh, recently, I started to work on another project about accessible tourism, how cities are accessible for tourists with disabilities, and um, I see that people aren't disabled, the cities. And uh, I want to uh, say that this is the most important, like the goals outlined in the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which plans to leave no one behind. So that was my presentation. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on time. <laughs> <laughs> and even was on time, I must have been I'm not going to mention it, but yeah, sorry. Right. <laughs> um, no, thank you very much. It's always really nice to hear that institutional setting has their uh, lens out, as you said, open to everybody and anybody, no social groups, uh, them being marginalized or dominant or whatever. Um, Still, your story falls into the category of cultural participation and opening to different, uh, as I said, social groups to participate and have access to uh, the institution, in this case, museum, that deals with heritage objects and heritage infrastructure. Although today, this is, this is the last uh, presentation that we had, but it would be interesting now even, even to take you to the round table to um, talk about, as Eva said, and I think that uh, I'm going to go back to your questions, 
institutions opening the doors, not only yeah. for cultural participation mm. of different profiles of social groups, but opening the doors for di different governance sort of models that we heard from this morning, for different sort of uh, interventions from what we heard uh, from Ivana and Philip, and for different forms of activism, social and community needs that we heard uh, from um, Evo, from prisoners, sorry, and uh, Tirana's example. But I'm not going to go any further um, and talk because I'm chairing and I can take the last week to talk. <laughs> um, but uh, questions, please. I know it's the last session, I know that you're tired, <laughs> but you had abundance of questions all <laughs> throughout the last two days. Well, you signed, but maybe we that? take a short no, break and take everything to the pa to the round table discussion. Oh yeah, afterwards. fine. I'm not the one to say, but like, yeah. that's okay with the organizers. Then yeah. Well, then we're taking everything to the round table. Thank you very, very, very much. Mm -hmm.